What do I even say about this? I mean, the previous owner's wife looked so happy to see it go. And then it was all, where's the trailer? And wait, you're gonna drive this thing for 700 miles? This Lewis Hamilton has death trap is called a DF Goblin, and it's a kit car that you assemble yourself using a Chevy Cobalt for parts. This one's made from an SS Turbo, and it's fucking terrifying. <laughs> Behind the seats is the same 260 horsepower and torque motor from the SS, but this car weighs only 1500 pounds. This, with no power mods, has a better power to weight ratio than a Formula 4 car or a Lamborghini Aventador. In fact, the only things that are done to this are the intake and exhaust, obviously, BC Racing coilovers, Corbo racing seats, NK Raijin wheels, and a water-cooled intercooler setup. We did indeed drive it along the east coast for 700 miles, and to my surprise, it actually wasn't uncomfortable. Just fucking scary, but more on that later. I've never driven anything this fast. Obviously, I mean, look at my daily driver. The only point of comparison I have is King Dakar. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. This car is a quarter second faster than that from a dead stop. Honestly, anyone buying this car would probably be fine getting the base model, which still has a 0 to 60 in 4.7 seconds. That is more than enough for anyone who hasn't driven a 400 horsepower street car. And even then, this isn't a car you can just get in and drive with no practice. It has no safety equipment, no ABS, traction control, or airbags, or crumple zones, and the steering wheel is the size of a dinner plate, which does not help the stability. You are the only thing that will save yourself from the wooden forever box, and you have to remember that. I certainly did, and honestly, I was scared shitless. Kyle and his full bolt on WRX might call me a pussy for saying that, and honestly so be it. Because there's fast, and there's sketchy fast. You can feel the front end of the car lift off the ground with every pull, and the wheel will twitch in your hand if you're not actively pulling towards you. You can make it less dangerous by changing some parts around and adding more downforce, but mid-engine cars are much different than other drivetrain configurations, and with that comes some massive changes in the way you have to drive it. In a front-wheel drive car, you should be applying the throttle right as you're exiting a corner because it's going to straighten the car out, but a mid-engine car is the opposite. If you do that in a mid-engine car, it's going to fishtail and you're probably going to crash. That's why a lot of MR2s get wrecked, and this is a lot faster than an MR2. Do I have any criticisms? Not really. I'm sure there's some handling compromise to being based on a Cobalt, but without putting it through its paces on the track, I really can't tell. If I'm nitpicking, these linkages in the shifter make it harder to put the car into 3rd or 5th, so I would just use the build shifter they make instead of the cobalt one, I think that should solve the issue. You also have a blind spot directly behind you, just so you know. Here's what I think is going to happen, give it 5 years or so, and these kit cars are going to be everywhere. People are constantly clamoring for those simple light cars from the 90s and 80s, and since manufacturers can't or won't make them, I think garage built kit cars could easily fill that niche if they could just become simple enough for the average Joe to build. This DF Goblin is a riot of a machine. It's literally a street legal ish roller coaster, and if open wheel race cars are your thing, then this is your best bet. You could buy an Aerial Atom, I hear those are pretty good, and it's probably going to perform better because it's an $80,000 hand-built track weapon. This is like 15 grand, but you gotta build it yourself. It's still hand-built, but it's not the same when the one building it has to look up tutorials of how to vent AC lines without getting arrested. That said, the car will probably turn out just fine. As long as you can follow a YouTube tutorial, it should be about as easy as assembling a LEGO Death Star. It seems like a well-made kit, nothing it comes with is shittily made, and cobalts aren't that much of a pain in the ass to stick apart. You got this. But if you want to buy one of these pre-built, please remember that this is a project car. You might run into some issues. For example, the previous owner was about 6 foot 5, so I had to put a pillow behind my back so that way I could reach the pedals. Would I buy one? No. I don't have a death wish, I'm not interested. But building a Turbo Goblin for anything besides hardcore track use is like buying an RTX 3080 Ti to play Osu or Fallout New Vegas with pregnant sunny smiles. Holy sh**. Again, I think a base goblin would be fine for most people, and I include myself in that category. I hope I get to drive one someday. I really do. Stay responsible, kiddos. I'ma head out. Subscribe if you wanna, or don't. But if you do, I won't clog your sub box.